Good morning, good morning, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Contend for the Faith broadcast. I am so excited to be with you one more morning. This is your host, Evangelist Sabrina White. Today, we are going to be talking about what does it mean to be lost? What does it mean to be lost? Our scripture text will be found, 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. And it reads, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus. We honor you today. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. You have been so good to us. You have kept us. It is you that have kept us. We thank you for giving us breath to breathe the activities of our limbs, food on our table, Lord, and clothed in our right mind. You have been faithful. You have been merciful. Hallelujah. You have been steadfast. You have shown yourself who you say you are, for you are the gods of all gods, kings of all kings, and lords above all lords. You are the only living God. Hallelujah. We thank you for giving your life for us. Hallelujah. On Calvary's cross, shedding innocent blood. Lord, for us, that we might have eternal life, a right to it, a choice to make it. And we thank you that we chose you today. Thank you for how you kept us and saved us and cleaned us and washed us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you have been good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah for the broadcast. Thank you for how it's touching and changing hearts. Lord, we ask that you continue to do what you do in the land. Save, bring out, deliver. In the name of Jesus, bring back the backsliders, Father. Hallelujah. They don't have the strength to come back. So, Father, ah, we ask that you will draw them back in before it's everlasting too late. Break Satan hopes over their mind, their thoughts. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, those that are lost, bring them in in the name of Jesus. Lord, Holy Ghost, do what you do. I send prayer where I cannot go. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch the bereaved families and all those that are going through right now. In the name of Jesus, waiting on miracles, waiting on healings, waiting on an answer. For Lord, all that we need is in you. All that the world needs. Help them to see it's in you. Thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is so wonderful. He is so good. I'm so excited. Excited to be on the air one more morning with you. I do thank the Lord for he has been so gracious to me and faithful to me. He has that everything I've asked him to do and some, I thank him for blessing this broadcast. Truly, it is of the Lord's doing, and I am just marveled at what he does over and over again. I do thank the Lord for my pastor. Yes, I have a pastor. Thank the Lord. Yes, I have an overseer, Pastor Joe White, First Lady Donna White. Praise the Lord. I do thank the Lord for... Mr. Bransfield there in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the manager there at the KVIV 98. I thank him for his support. And I do thank the Lord for the KVIV 98 point family. I thank the Lord for you, you, and you. Thank you for your prayers. I need your prayers and I appreciate your support and all that you've given down through the years. Been on since 2018, and I'm just excited for, for what the Lord is doing. This broadcast is touching hearts. It is the broadcast is changing and transforming lives, inspiring others. Amen. To receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. All right, let's get to work. What does it mean to be lost? You got your Bible, you got your pen, you got your paper. You know the drill. Okay, now let's get busy. Okay, I've read and you're hearing already 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our, gospels be, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And that is so important. Jesus in St. John 11, 25 and 26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. 
And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Oh, I do want to say that it is something to be lost, even when we when we're driving. And I'm a very unique person because I can I can have my GPS on the GPS on. I can have OnStar talking to them, and I still end up lost. I I just I'm just unique like that. <laughs> it's nothing that I'm boasting in. Sometimes I, it makes me wonder, but I'm just unique like that. I can get lost, and uh, so I know how it is to get lost directionally. To you know, to you lose your bearing, if that's such a word. But I'm not really good with east, west, the east coast, and the west coast, and northwest, southwest, and all that. Hallelujah! I have to really take my time and listen intently. <laughs> to map out where I'm going. <clears throat> so as heaven said that it is easy to get lost, but when you know you're lost, you know, you know you're lost. <coughs> However, we're living in a time where people don't know since they hadn't heard who Jesus really is and what he did on the cross and what he gave up for them. <clears throat> They haven't really been taught that they are lost. Uh, they've been taught a lot of other things, but never lost. For whatever reason, um, who wants to be lost, number one? Spiritually, naturally, who really wants to be lost? And, you know, who's going around, I wish I was lost. No, no one wants to be lost. Whether it's trying to find your way somewhere or find, trying to find your way to Jesus. People don't want to be lost. And this is where the continuing of the faith broadcast come in. I am here to help you if you are lost. I am here to help you if you have lost your way along the way. So that's the purpose of uh, the lesson today. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay. Uh, the Bible presents the truth that mankind is lost understanding what it means to be lost and how it can be fixed is the difference between eternity what are you saying why well to understand that you are lost and how to get that fixed it determines your eternity with jesus or spending eternity <clears throat> without and plainly put heaven or hell the biblical concept of loss is destruction, ruin, death. And the Bible speaks of those in different contextual settings. You know, ruin, ruin death, <clears throat> destructions. Um, we want to describe loss for those that reject the good news. That's the type of loss that we want to deal with today. Soul loss, conscious loss. Mm, uh, that is what we want to deal with today that type of being lost rejecting the good news rejecting the gospel of salvation so that's what we're going to talk about 2 Corinthians my opening text 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 says if our gospel be hid is hid to them that are lost verse 4 in whom the Jesus of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now notice, when they have refused to retain Jesus in their knowledge, when they refuse to accept him as God, as Savior, as King, as Lord, what he did, he blinded their eyes that they would not even receive. See, there's a lostness when you have you are bent on not believing. You are an unbeliever and you're an advocate of unbelieving. No, most of when you're an advocate for something, you are an influencer, an influencer to get others to to speak against Jesus, to speak against the cross, to speak speak against what he came to do and that was to save the lost so when you are bent on not wanting him not wanting to deal with him 
and you are teaching that he is false, that there never was a Jesus, or if you're saying that you yourself is Jesus, or you're saying it, just look to me, I have all the answers, I can help you. Uh, 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 the Lord, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna blind your eyes. I, I, uh, you want this darkness? I'm gonna turn you over to yourselves to do that which is unseemly against your own self. So uh, the God of this world, Jesus, said, I have blinded the minds of them which believe not. You're bent on that. You're in that stupor. You do not want to come out. You are anti-Christ. You are anti-Jesus. Well, I'm going to let you enjoy that and just stay lost. So let's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of Jesus should shine unto them. And there are people, I must say, unfortunately, for their own, uh, to their own demise, they have pledged their allegiance. They have pledged their own obedience to stand against the gospel and to stand against Jesus himself. Amen. We deal with that. Jesus dealt with it in his day. And today we're still dealing with that today. So it means that the gospel veil uh, to them uh, is because of their unbelief, that veil, that thickness over their eyes that they cannot see uh, is there. And Satan, which is the God of this age, uh, has blinded the minds of unbelievers, and he wants to keep them that way. And uh, these are people that uh, unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel. And there's a difference when Jesus said that I have given them over to themselves. These are people that some are become apostates. Some was possibly once believers. Or some were just brought up to not believe. Jesus said, I'm going to give you over to yourself to do that. And then, then, then Satan, for those that want to come out and want, that can be, that, uh, that can want, can, can become believers, he wants to blind their, their eye, the minds of, uh, uh, the eyes of the unbeliever. So if, uh, if you're lost, the gospel is hid. To them that are lost. And I hope you understand that point so thus far. Uh, Ephesians 4.15 says, Whether he said, Awake thou that sleepest and rise from the dead, Christ shall give thee life. The unsaved man is dead because he is alienated from Jesus. We're still talking about what does it mean to be lost. Having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of Jesus through the ignorance um, that's in them because of the blindness of their heart, the blindness of their heart. So St. John 11, 23, 25 and 26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. And later on, he said in 26 verse, for whosoever uh, liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Jesus is the resurrection. He is the only one. He is the He is the only one that can bring us back from our deadness. He, when we baptize in Jesus' name, Galatians three twenty seven said we are put we put on Christ. We when we go down and come back up. And we go down dead in our sins, and he dead in our in, 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 in sin, and we we come up at life in Jesus Christ. So we need to make Jesus uh, Jesus need to be made alive in you. So the opposite is true. The believer is the one who knows Jesus and known by him in Galatians 4 and 9. These are the ones that aren't lost. You, you aren't lost. You've been washed of your sins. You're serving him. You're speaking in tongues because that's the power of the Holy Ghost that the Lord has placed in you. So you know him. You walk with him. You have a relationship with him. But what I'm talking about, those that are 
lost, lost in their sin, lost and uh, alienated from Christ and have chose to be alienated from Christ. So the lost is cut off. They are alienated. They are cut off from uh, from Jesus. He doesn't have, uh, the lost does not have that uh, the, the, uh, the that Jesus kind of life, that newness of light. They don't have the light to shine in him, nor do they have life in him. So that's what the lost doesn't have. But for those that have been washed of their sin, have received Jesus through by faith and has been uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, now we are sitting in heavenly places with him as opposed to those that are yet in darkness, blind in darkness. So what can you do about this situation? Well, the steps to salvation cures every lost soul. If you are saved, born again, you know, of course, the steps that you took you to accept salvation. But you have to understand uh, the what fully happened. You might not understand the, the big scope. All you know that you heard the word. It convicted you so that you wanted to repent and you did repent and you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You got baptized and before you know it, you were speaking in tongues. The Lord filled you with the Holy Ghost. So first you believed, you repented, you were baptized and you received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. It is simple. <laughs> it's just that simple. There's nothing deep about this. No Greek, no Latin. It's just you chose to believe. The Lord drew you the word of God. You heard the word and the word became life to you. And not only life, but it became a light to you. So you believed it. You saw it. It was revealed to you. Jesus revealed himself to you as the preacher was preaching. You repented. You knew you had to make a choice. So you repented and was washed of your sins again. And Jesus filled you with the Holy Ghost. So it's a simple case of believing the word of God that was preached to you. And you're having a yearning heart to grip, to grip the word of God. Shortly before Jesus Left, he told his disciples that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, saith unto him, and for John truly baptized with water, but ye should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And that's why it's important to be filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, Acts 1 and 8. That's what give us power. You wonder, and you can't do this well. Jesus said, I'll give you power. Uh, he has empowered us through the Holy Ghost. Jesus, the Holy Ghost is Jesus. He said in St. John 14, 26, that he's going to send another comforter. He is that comforter that resides in you and I. So repentance here, um, those who repent of their sins have a complete change of mind. When you believe on him as Lord and Savior, then you repent. I'm explaining these steps, what happened to you when you received him, when you decide not to be lost any longer. And once you was baptized in Jesus' name and washed of your sins, it says, know ye not that many of us that was baptized into Christ, was baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him in baptism and to his death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I know there's a whole chunk there, but read that in your leisure, Romans 6, 3, and 4. The baptism also must be done in the name of Jesus, just as Peter enjoined the people, told the people, and gathered all those people, and it says they went down in Jesus' name on the day of Pentecost. What's, a, what's so important about the name? Well, there's two reasons about the name. The scripture commands us to use the name, number one. <laughs> number two, need is your salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, Acts 4 and 12. Receiving the Holy Ghost. It's, it's very proper. You've been baptized. Now you, the next thing is receiving the Holy Ghost. 
And um, Jesus said, I will pray that the Father will give you another comforter. I already said that beforehand. He give you another comforter when you receive it. You have Jesus in you. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is going to come back. And that same spirit that's in you is going to quicken you, that could quicken Jesus. It's also going to quicken your mortal body. And you're going to be caught up to be with the Lord forever in the air. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to let you know that you don't have to be lost. If you're lost and if you went through these steps, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now you can tell others. Uh, the steps of salvation, the steps of uh, coming to the light, the steps of finding Jesus or, or, or seeking him. Uh, you know, someone said, I found Jesus. Uh, well, Jesus isn't lost. We're the one that's lost. So Jesus, come get me. I am lost. And I want to ask the question today, are you lost? So you should, you should be only you can answer that. And if you have been washed of your sins and you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost you can, and, and you haven't turned from sin, you can say, well, I want to be safe and solid because it sounds like I'm lost. I haven't changed my lifestyle. I'm a good person, but nothing really has changed. I still have some things in my life that I think that I know for a fact that I need to be washed in the blood of Jesus. I need to be washed in that name so the Lord can save me from my lostness. Whatever God, what, uh, whatever God wants you to do, whatever he wants to say to you, whatever he wants you to be, strive your utmost to be just that. Otherwise, all your reading, all your praying, all your hearing is in vain. Now, that's talking about after you have received him. After you have taken care of the question, are you lost? Okay, you're not lost no more. So, once you be washed of your sins, and once you feel the Holy Ghost, do everything in your power. And ask the Lord for help every day. Every day seeking for help every day to do his will to strive your utmost amen to do what he would have you to do and um the lord wants to take you back with him when he come so if you lose your salvation it's a terrible price you would have to pay so i encourage you to stay steadfast, keep your mind on the Lord. You don't have to be lost. And for those that have not received Jesus, and you cannot answer the question if you're lost or not. I, if you're confused about it and you've been going to church all your life and your pastor is your dad or your mom and you still say, hey, there is really no change. I, I'm doing what the world is doing and I lie and I cuss and all these things. You know what you know. You should know what you if you're lost or not. I know there's a lot of confusion out there. I do understand that. Because they're saying you can do this and you can do that. and But the Lord said there was once he had winked on the ignorance of man, but he's no longer winking. He is calling everyone to repentance. There was a time he winked at sin because he knew man could not do better. But after he died on the cross and sent back the power of the Holy Ghost, 66 books, the Psalms, hallelujah, the, the the five books of Moses, uh, the parables, the Beatitudes, hallelujah, the fruit of the Spirit, all of this to keep you and his blood and prayer and the in the Bible it, uh, itself where you can read, there is no excuse. Oh man, there is no excuse to stay in your situation, to stay in sin. There is no excuse to walk away from the Lord. There is no excuse because your church hurt, home hurt, you hurt yourself, you hurt. There is no excuse. Jesus forgives sins. He's the God of the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, 
ninth, tenth time, he forgives. Hallelujah. All you have to do is make up your mind. I'm not going to do it no more. I don't want to live in this the way I've been living. You've been, are you lost? What does it mean to be lost? Now you know to be alienated from Jesus. Amen. To not want him at all. To want to do it your way, live your way, on your time, on your dime. And that is not how it's supposed to be. We must obey what the Lord has said before us. You've been listening to Contend for the Faith broadcast. This has been your host, Evangelist Sabrina White.